Welcome everyone. My name is Robert Montano. This is Effective Web Application Development with Apache Sling. A couple of words about myself. Uh, I work as a senior computer scientist for Adobe in Basel, Switzerland. I'm a member of the Apache Software Foundation, serving as the current PMC chair of Apache Sling. And I'm also involved in the Jackrabbit and Felix communities. Now, today we're going to do, do it in the following way. Uh, we're going to get a quick intro and have a basic grasp of what Apache Sling is all about. Then we're going to see a demo, so we can sort of anchor these concepts uh, in something more visual. And then we'll get to the core concepts and a couple of useful ex extensions of Apache Sling. In the end, we'll, uh, uh, we'll wrap it all up by seeing how to set up, set up a productive, um, no, production-ready um, project with Apache Sling. Now, for the quick intro, as you might have guessed from the title, Apache Sling is a web application framework. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a helpful that sort of channels the way uh, you want to develop a project as opposed to a library, which is more or less drop-in and less opinionated. It's modular, so you can build from small microservice applications to uh, very large enterprise scale, if you will, applications with it and um, just trim and take what you want from it. It is resource oriented. Um, and I'll get back to that in just a little bit. Uh, it's its core is written in Java, although um, you can run multiple scripting languages on top of it for rendering, and you can obviously run everything that also runs on the top of G on the top of JVM. It's a, it's fourteen years old at the Apache Software Foundation, which is I guess pretty old in terms of internet age, but uh, pretty young when compared to me at least. So, what do we mean by resource orientation? Typically, when you develop an application, you would start up by defining your routes. So let's say slash users is handled by my user control and slash users slash placeholder is a route for my ID. And Sling would turn this upside down. We start by defining our resources, uh, which you can see in the screenshot here. Um, and you, you construct your resource tree. Let's say we have content users or content blogs. And then for those resources you install rendering scripts or rendering servlets and this way you always have a consistent view of your resource tree and overlaps and much much easier to debug okay so now it's time for the first demo get a quick overview about how to develop applications on top of that of apache sling we will use the sling starter a sample module that demonstrates how to assemble a Sling application and allows you to quickly deploy your Sling applications on top of it. I have the starter running locally on port 8080 on my own machine. I will start by exploring the content after authenticating with the default admin admin credentials. Out of this whole resource tree that is exposed by Sling, I would like to call out slash content where the end user accessible content usually lives and apps where the rendering scripts are placed. So I will start by creating a resource titled hello. I will also give it a couple of properties. The first one is a title. And the second one is a special property for Sling called resource type, which will give Sling a way of knowing how to handle this resource in case of requests. So let's render this resource out of the box. And we can see that for JSON, Sling already has some default handlers and it renders all the properties. It does something similar for XML. Also, it also has some other renderers like a plain text renderer, uh, which is informative, but not particularly useful, I would say, and also a, an HTML renderer. So let's quickly create an HTML renderer that is slightly more useful. So to do that, I will create um, an, a new file which acts as a rendering script. I will call it html.html. And the reasons will become clear once we get to the script resolution part of Apache Sling. 
and I will give it a very basic content which will render out of the resource properties the JCR title property. And once we refresh, we see that uh, the rendering is what we expected. All right, time to look at a, core con a couple of core concepts with Apache's link. So in this diagram, I have colored in light blue the items which are provided uh, from outside of Apache's link. So you can see at the top that the HTTP layer which is powered by Jerry, and that implementation is wrapped by Apache Felix. Um, and at the very bottom, we have the content repository, which is coming from Apache Jackrabbit. We use Apache Felix as a module and service framework. It's based on OSGI, and it also provides a web console where we can do a lot of administrative tasks. And then we have the modules that are provided by Apache Slink itself. Um, and we have a central point for authentication authorization, and then most requests are routed through the Sling main servlet. Um, and then we, we have a couple of default implementations of servlets, and then it's free for all. We plug our own um, servlets or rendering engines, and we have a large number of extensions. I just listed logging, eventing, scripting, validation, distribution, but really there, there are a lot more that you can um, choose to, uh, to put into your application or not. Now, what are resources, right? We talk a lot about them. So um, resources are basically an abstraction over the underlying storage. They have a name, um, they have uh, key value properties, and they can have a, a parent. Obviously the root resource does not have, not have a parent, but everyone else does. And the resources can be of various types, um, you know, strings, numbers, dates. Um, you can even have blobs, right? Opaque, opaque um, binary data that is stored as properties. By default, we store them in uh, Jackrabbit Oak, which is uh, not by coincidence a search engine that is very well optimized uh, for such representation. We do have other providers, um, uh, the a NoSQL provider based on MongoDB. A file system storage provider, so you can. It's a nice way of integrating your existing infrastructure if you choose to choose to do so. And they're not exclusive. Um, you can have Jackrabbit Oak owning most of the the resource tree, and then have a certain sub subpath mounted from the file system if it suits you. Now, Jackrabbit Oak has two distinct ways of storing. Uh, resources. One is for what you call nodes and one is for blobs. Now blobs are simply defined as uh, properties which take more than a certain size. The theory being that they are better suited for being stored in a different storage, uh, different kind of storage. And we can have the classical segment, what we call segment-based persistence in, in Jackrabbit Oak, which is a way of storing things in on the file system in append knowledge R files, which are really, really fast and designed for standalone deployments. We can have, uh, we can have storage in MongoDB using something called the document node store. So we take objects, serialize them as documents and throw them in document storage. And MongoDB is the most often used that. It's not as uh, performant as the segment node store. On the other hand, it allows you to scale the deployment um, using the MongoDB clustering primitives. You can also choose to run um, the document node store using a relational database. Usually if uh, your operational skill set is more into that area. Now for blobs, the simplest option is the file system, which is again, uh, very performant. And you, you can have a standalone deployment with it or uh, you can have some sort of shared file system like a um, storage area network or um, an NFS server, and that can work for a uh, cluster deployment as well. Uh, you can have them stored in MongoDB for simplicity. It's not necessarily what we recommend, but it's an option and you can store them into S3 compatible storage as well if you have large storage needs or if it's a better fit for your, uh, for your operational capabilities. Now, from an authorization point of view, all the users and access control entries, so rules, who gets to access what, who gets to change what, are stored in the JCR repository. 
what that means is that most of the time, the access control is already enforced for you. You don't have to do checks at runtime in your service layer. Can this user read this object? Since the objects are stored in the JCR repository and the user is known and the access control entries are known, a user that is not allowed to read a certain resource will never get the chance to see that. They will just get a, uh, a re an error from Sling, which is um, a, a great way of eliminating a whole class of programming errors. Of course, not everyone is logged in, so we have a anonymous user that um, is used to, to signal that the user is not logged in. And yeah, typically these have very little access, depending on your, your setup. You can have, like, if it's a public website, you can have read-only access to a certain subtree or even uh, completely disallow access to users who are not logged in. And on the opposing side, there's a user who can do everything, the admin user, who is usually reserved for administrative tasks. And for authentication, um, we have different login modules. These are pluggable. You can do HTTP basic authentication, uh, form basic, form based authentication, which is basically username and passwords to submit form. You can do uh, SAML based logins and of course, pluggable extensible, you can bring your own. Now we let's see um, how we can start defining the re these um, users and access control entries. And for that, we use a text-based provisioning language called Repointit. And you can see a couple of examples here. Here we create a service user. So it's a user that we cannot log into, but it's used to run background tasks. And we, we call it who, and we create a work path for it under uh, slash TMP who private. And that service user is allowed to um, do everything in that private work area. Another option is to um, create a group and you know add a couple of users to that group and then um, allow them read access to slash content slash staging. And this one, Repointit is useful for defining, let's say, system level um, res groups, users, access control entries, not necessarily for regular users that access your application because those are more dynamic. At these sort of ensure that the basic skeleton of your application is up in terms of resources and um, users. Now I've uh, sort of skipped uh, the discussion of what happens when someone tries to access a resource. How does Sling know how to render it? So this is an example. Um, we are accessing content slash content slash welcome that tiny that JSON. And from this very simple invocation, Sling can extract a lot of information. First of all, the access method is get, that's the HTTP verb. And the content path is slash content slash welcome. So that's the resource, sorry, the resource path. And then JSON is the extension and whatever comes between the path and the extension as a selector or a group of selectors. And selectors are ways of providing alternative renderings. But you know, that, that's really it one. Um, 99% of the resource descriptor resolution that you're going to, to do with the patches link. And then it, it can go and see that, hey, this is slash content slash welcome. It has a couple of properties. And most importantly, a resource called sling resource type, which is called, uh, has the value slash block slash welcome. And that property tells sling how to, with what script to render the resource. So it uh, we go to slash apps, which is typically where the, uh, rendering scripts provided by the application lib, and we have we append the resource type slash blog slash welcome, and then we look for the script which matches the selector and the extension. So we, we select apps blog welcome tiny slash JSON, which is the extension. And finally, JSP is the rendering engine, uh, the scripting engine extension. So that that's not has nothing to do with the actual resource itself. And we can have multiple scripting engines. Uh, I mean, the, the grandfather of our scripting engines is the JSP. It's uh, the oldest one. It's a standard specification. It's well understood. Um, so I guess there's a lot of documentation around it and a lot of knowledge about it on one hand. On the other hand, it's a bit verbose. Uh, you can see uh, how you can get to render a couple of resources here. 
and it's unaware of a couple of sling specific contexts. So it's it, it's good, it works well. It's maybe not the most productive uh, scripting engine to work for. We also have a, another scripting engine called HTL, which has been developed from the start having Sling in mind. And it, it's a lot more compact. Uh, it's also based on a specification, although no, not as widely known as uh, this, uh, the JSP specification. Um, it, it's designed to be secure out of the box. So when you do, if you look at the, the JSP rendering, if you're working a bit in security, you would get some red flags just by rendering HTML output in the page. Uh, those JCR title and JCR description properties might have come from users. We need to sanitize them. HTML does that out of the box. It's aware that it's rendering HTML context and it does escaping out of the box or even CSS or JavaScript context. The only downside that I see is that it's less well known outside of Sling, so you may not find that uh, much uh, documentation about it except in the Sling context. Again, there are many other scripting engines uh, based on um, well-known template engines like Freemark or Thymeleaf. There is a Groovy scripting language if you want to use plain old Groovy for uh, rendering. It is trivial to add your own, as I like to say, for small values of trivial. I mean, not trivial, trivial, but it, it, it's also not that hard to add a new scripting engine to Apache Sling. Now, uh, the twin brother of, of Cryptar Serverless, they have the exact same power. Uh, they're invoked exactly the same by Sling. Um, it's just that they're written in, in Java or a different JPM-based language. And here you can see how you can define a, uh, a servlet. It has a couple of annotations. Uh, it says, hey, these are the extensions and the resource types that I want to, to be invoked for. And then you implement a do get resource and basically that is it. Um, usually scripts, uh, sorry, templates, uh, no, scripts actually are very suited for rendering HTML uh, because you can easily do that. And scripts are better for processing uh, post requests or rendering JSON or different formats. Now, we saw how we can resolve scripts, uh, but at the same time, we often have requests to make it easier or more flexible to render a resource. So assume that we have a slash content slash welcome page and we want to make it as available as content bunvenit, which incidentally is welcome in my native language of Romanian, or set up some wildcard-based redirect rules, or set up a vanity subdomain and send them all to, um, to a certain subpage, and maybe a short URL for flyers. One of the solutions that we have is to use aliases. Now, aliases are simple properties set on the resource, and when, when the resource and it provides an alternate an alternate name for the resource. So in that case, uh, for this example, welcome is replaced can be replaced by bunvenit. So if we invoke, uh, we uh, we render slash content slash bunvenit, we actually get the welcome resource, but rendered at a different name. And of course, the welcome resource is still available under its original name. So that is the most simple scenario that we can serve. Now we can have also something called mappings, which are richer rules for setting up redirects. In our case, we have um, a structure under Etsy map HTTP, and then we create a node called foo.example.com. And we set a redirect property on it that sends that is the path that we want it to redirect to. And when we call load up Sling um, and tell it we're, you're invoked at the virtual host foo.example.com, it sends a full redirect to blog news uh, event 2021.html without having that entry in the resource tree at all. And we can do also um, more complicated examples using regular expression capture and match. So, um, we can use the sling.match property, we set the regex, we capture whatever comes after the domain name and set up a redirect using back references. So all in all, a lot of rich redirect rules. Now we want to sort of take 
what we developed in terms of um, content and scripts, more importantly, and develop them and deploy them in our sync based application. Now, we saw in the demo how we can do that using live editing. That's good for prototyping, not that good for you know, reproducible deployments and overall best practice when developing software. So we have something which are called file vault content packages, and it allows us to take what is in the file system and store it in the repository and, and back, right? From the repository to the file system. Um, it has multiple tool support, um, a command line tool support, um, ID integration as well. It's, um, and you can also um, run it via Maven, uh, via Node.js. And it is basically a file system structure. Um, you can see that we have something a structure like apps of Chikanoisia page, page HTML, and that is the exact same structure that would be living in the repository once we deploy it. What is included is a defined under meta inf vault filter XML. And whatever properties, additional properties we want to define are stored in a sidecar XML file that lives next uh, um, to the node itself. So, um, and, and this is uh, the structure. Basically, the property names are reflected as G, as uh, XML attributes. So, uh, if we looked at the .content.xml um, file next to page HTML, this is the one, and it, it defines an a couple of additional properties. And yes, uh, the uh, the filter definition says which uh, which exact um, paths are owned by the content packages. And this becomes important if you have multiple content packages deploying under the same root because they can override their um, each other's uh, content paths. So it become, it's very important to say um, which paths are owned by your content package. In terms of modularity, um, we use OSGI, um, and that means that we have a module system and a service system uh, for working with our application. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, 220 something modules deployed by default in Slink. Um, you can throw away a lot of those. Um, this is Java State Batteries included demo. And uh, OSGI makes it easy to develop your own small independent modules, uh, which is overall a good idea for your development quality and velocity. And it also encourages you to create many small services that work together um, with the OHI service registry. For deployment time, uh, sorry, for development time, and if you want to for deployment time as well, OHI allows you to redeploy your modules without restarting the application. So that can be a very productive way of, of developing. Services are easy to define and implement using a couple of annotations. Here we see a service. Um, that is annotated as a component, and because it implements a single interface, it is a service registered for, for that interface. Um, a method is marked as activate, um, and it picks up a configuration that is defined by, uh, by user. So it's a very low friction and a very powerful tool. Now, uh, in our rendering scripts uh, or in our servlets, we often find the need to transform before from one object to another and they have they are unrelated at, uh, at a Java class level. And well, we can usually do this using factory methods um, and various conversions, but it is nicer to be able to run a very co a concise conversion, especially when uh, running in scripts. So the adapt to uh, it's an implementation of the uh, adaptable pattern for Sling. And adapt to is a way of running this conversion. So, for instance, we can maybe want to take the high-level resource script, uh, the resource object, and transform it into a low-level node object. Or, if the resource is uh, a file, we adapt it to an input stream and get access to the actual uh, to the actual byte stream. So, uh, many ways of doing these conversions. Of course, you can register your own. And the implementation is an OSGI service. Um, you just you say, I convert from types A, B, C to types D, E, F, and you provide the implementation itself.
and then uh, your implementation is ready to be to be used and it's just uh, you the client only needs to call um, adapt to a new resource now let's talk about just a couple of useful extensions for sling first one is sling models now sling models i like to think of it as a uh, very powerful shorthand for adapt to and more so what this allows us is to no longer write the conversion uh, implementation and declare how the conversion should happen. So for instance, we have this my model class, which is adapted from a resource. And then we say the title is taken for the resource properties. Now the children property is taken from the child node. And we can also in inject OJ services. So, and all that without having to write an adapter factory. And uh, you can use them in various ways uh, using adapt to in Java, in JSP, in HTL, uh, very compact. We have also an implementation of GraphQL. Now, GraphQL, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is a way of expressing a query and modification and mutation operation in a standardized manner and um, you know, have the, uh, on the client side, Sorry, on the client side, very important in JavaScript, and then send it to server in processing, and it will return all those queries in the, the query response in the same input format as requested by the client. Um, it is much more flexible in certain scenarios because you can define only a subset of the properties, and that is a um, closer to what the client wants, and b it can be much more. Um, it can be optimized as opposed to get, getting access to a very large object tree using REST patterns. So in, in Sling, uh, we have, um, you know, the Sling modules allow you to define a schema, and this is more or less uh, a standard GraphQL schema that we, we retrieve using HTTP. And um, yeah, we say this is a query, it has a section and application, and what is interesting is the fetcher directive, which is um, a custom for us for Sling, and it, it gives a couple of fetcher objects for each section. And one is website current resource, one is website navigation. And how this ties into Sling is that you register a, a component that is a Sling data fetcher and it has a name that matches the directive, the fetcher directive. So if we look at navigation section, it says, hey, I, I'm using the website slash navigation fetcher. And then that fetcher has this property that I'm the fetcher named website navigation. And then a Slink GraphQL engine puts these two together and then returns the result in the get method. And here you're free to do whatever you want to get access to the resource tree or even to something else and return the results. And I know the, the 30 seconds intro to, to uh, GraphQL and Sling. Good. Now, let's see how we can set up a project. There are two main ways um, of setting up a project quickly. One is the project archetype that is using Maven. And you use the standard Maven um, uh, commands, you know, Maven archetype generate, and then you give it a couple of uh, properties and generates a full project for you, uh, where you have an uh, OSGI bundle to deploy Java code. You have a content package that contains uh, the base structure of the application. If, and if you want to, we can also set up a couple of sample scripts and uh, resources. And that's what we're going to be seeing in a couple of minutes in the demo. We also have a Node.js based application, which is called the Sling Packager and it allows you to define your content packages on the file system and deploy them to Slink uh, without running any sort of Java process. Okay, and with that, uh, let's go to the second demo and set up a project using the Maven archetype. So now let's see what the real world project setup would look like about just Slink. As mentioned, we are going to use the Maven project archetype. I, I'm using a little script because there are a number of options and rather than doing interactively, it's easier to uh, to just run the script. So I will generate a project called ApacheCon Asia, right? And uh, to make it simpler to inspect, I will import it into my IDE as a Maven project. 
no need for a working set. And let's see what that has generated for us. So there are three nested projects, core, which is an OSGI bundle, the Java code launcher, which describes how the application is assembled and launched, and UI apps, which is a content package that contains a couple of sample resources and rendering scripts. Now, uh, let's start with the UI apps. We have apps where the scripts are content for the sample pages and it's a map HTTP localhost any which controls a redirect role from the root page to our own page, to the entry point of the application. That is disabled by default because you can only have one application controlling the root page. Let's disable that because we don't have anything else um, running in our Sling instance. And for the content, we have static subtree, which holds a CSS file, minimal styling so that our application um, looks a bit more professional. And then we have this home page and two sub pages, contact and welcome. In apps, we have the rendering scripts. So we have two types of pages, the home page and the basic page. The basic page has this page.html script, which contains the full, the full page rendering, and it delegates to other scripts that a body, head, footer to do the, the main rendering. And um, the home page is actually a subtype of the default page, so it just overrides uh, some parts of it. This script uses a sling model, so let's jump right to that. Um, the script, uh, sling model is not terribly complicated. It returns the user ID of the current user if found. Additionally, the core bundle has a couple of servlets. One of them is a, a servlet that binds by resource type. So we have it's binding to the default um, uh, resource type. So it should answer for all resource types, assuming they have the hello selector and the HTML extension. The zip servlet, on the other hand, binds to our home page and the zip extension. And it's an interesting way to, to dump all the direct children. So it iterates over the, the children of the requested resource. Um, and it puts the contact, contents in text format in a zip archive. And finally, the launcher, rather than building everything ourselves specifying all the base versions of the bundles, which versions of Oak, which configurations we use. We actually inherit from the Sling Starter uh, most of our code, uh, sorry, most of our deployment, and we are free in our own feature definition to say we just want the core bundle and the UI apps content package. That being said, let's build the application. And, and this will build the OSJ bundle, the content package, will assemble, will analyze and assemble the application in the launcher folder. And now we can launch it. Takes just a bit. I think we should be good so we can go to Firefox. And our application is installed. The redirect rule worked, so we are we have been sent to our entry page, not necessarily the root page. Let's take a look at, uh, I'll split this. Let's take a look at the zip rendering. So I'm just downloading the zip file using curl and then listing the entries using uh, BSD char. So we can see that we have the welcome.txt and contact.txt, which are exactly the children of the resource. Uh, finally, I'd like to show you how to make and quickly deploy changes. So let's go one level up 
and if we go to the zip servlet let's make a very minor modification we are going to slightly change the way zip entries are named so one option is to fully rebuild everything stop the application rebuild the bundle relaunch everything on the other hand sling allows you to be much more fine-grained and we are going to rebuild the core bundle and redeploy it using the sling maven plugin thanks to the fact that we're using osgi we can redeploy all the content at runtime and oh uh, i should be running a curl call and we can see that the names have changed so quick incremental changes very fast to deploy let's see how this plays out for rendering scripts so i'm just going to say this is new content content and run a similar command for the content package so we run this and we redeploy it using a different uh, maven uh, plugin and if we refresh the page we see the new content here that concludes my presentation for today thank you very much for attending I'd like to leave you with a couple of resources, most importantly, importantly the Sling website, and an invitation to try out Sling using the Sling starter um, and to join the Sling users mailing list in case you have questions or other comments. Thank you very much.